based on, on on being a Canadian citizen. You became a citizen last year, I think. Yeah, last year, September. OK, uh, when you started your journey many years ago, like five years ago, four years ago. Actually, more than that, we started in uh, late 16, 2016. And uh, we don't have uh, Canada or US or Australia in mind. It just about we were at the stage of uh, family planning and uh, me and my wife decide that if we have to bring our kids, we are not bringing in this uh, here. We just uh, look for an opportunity. If we can get it, uh, we will go out and uh, look for a better lifestyle. Uh, because I was from an IT infrastructure side. I was not doing nine to five job. I was working for almost last seven, eight years for uh, a customer who is based in North America. So doing night shifts, evening shifts all the time, I told my wife that, see, if I have to work for these people, why, I, why, can't, why we can't just go there and work in their time zone, you know? This is, this is killing me. Um, it's 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 tolling on my on my uh, relations, my health, and everything. So that was the key reason. Main reason was not to earn money. It it was to have a better and a balanced lifestyle. When you when you're talking about balanced lifestyle, is it something that that you lacked in uh, working in India, where you were working? You were making uh, comparable uh, salaries there, based in yeah. where you are from New, New Delhi. But when you when you talk about balanced lifestyle, what was it that was lacking in that lifestyle there? So there was always an uncertainties, um, uncertainties in terms of uh, you know uh, health. Um, like if I have to do uh, a certain job, I, I like if you if you're dealing with dealing with someone um, someone in government, right? In Indian government, you don't know what what. How long that thing gonna take? Let let it be a health system. Let it be a, a system that has been set for many years back home. You don't know. Uh, so and then, and more than that, we are there are too much dependencies on others. Like okay, आज काम वाली मेड आई है नहीं आ रही है ठीक है and uh, okay uh, the cook is coming or not uh, the maid is coming or not if that is not happening then we are on our on our own. Uh, so when you remove that kind of dependencies from your life and you know that, okay, uh, there is no maid coming in the morning. This is me who's going to wake up, make tea, pack lunch for my kids, do the laundry, do the cleaning. It's, it's, trust me, the life becomes more simple. Now you will say, okay, why don't you remove mates that you back in him? You'll just remove, get, get, uh, ask all the mates to go and then do the things yourself. It's not happening. And mm -hmm. as I said, the foremost reason for me is to have a better nine to five job where I can go in. And uh, especially in terms of uh, safety, you know, the safety uh, towards my kids. Uh, women and you know all those things happening back home uh so we were totally like kind of come out of it and that that's the main reason our lifestyle we're looking yeah. for well what are you an engineering graduate what did you study in bachelor's level so i did my engineering yes but uh, i did in uh, instrumentation it's uh, it's more like an industrial engineering uh but fortunately or unfortunately, I get a chance to work in IT. I, I didn't get a job when I passed out in 2008. Uh, I got an opportunity uh, to work uh, straight with one of the topmost IT companies. I got campus recruited from there. And, and then I never looked back. It stayed, it stays in IT, eat IT, drink IT, sleep IT. So now <laughs> it's been more than 15 years now. Yeah. Uh, did did many of your friends in your uh, in your graduate class in your class where you were studying many of the people uh, did they go abroad and you may perhaps were inspired by them you know somebody went to America or other countries? Um, back in two thousand eight, there was not much trend of people uh, you know settling for uh, outside country, especially the PR. 
Uh, I do know like few relatives of mine who were settled um, in, in UK. I know few of my college seniors who went, but they went from a company, the company sponsors program. I think uh, the trend started in late uh, 2012 and 13 when the express entry, when, when Canada declared the express entry scheme. And on the same lines, Australia also come up with their PR plan. Yeah. I think th at that moment, it, it, it's like uh, we start thinking about that option too. Yeah, so uh, the express entry started in 2015. And uh, I think that's the time was uh, was the trend center for the point system competition in Australia, Canada, uh, and that's that's how that's how many people, young professionals, wanted to enroll into the Express Entry profile and move forward. Um, you applied into Express Entry that time. I applied in Express Entry, correct. Would you remember how much points did you have that time? And uh, trying to compare the the cutoff that time with now. Um, not precisely. Uh, well. In my case, my wife was primary. Actually, uh, we both uh, started as a primary and we said, okay, whomsoever gets the best score in IELTS, you know, that makes a whole difference. Um, when we started our PR journey, we were around 25, 26. I think that's the, I think when you're 21, you get the maximum points. Uh, in your peer, like 110, and then it, every year it keeps on decreasing. Uh, so my wife is a year younger than me, so we make her primary so that we can get additional five points. And then I remember she get uh, overall seven band, like eight in um, um, eight in listening, and then rest seven in all the. It's, uh, called, it's called triple seven. Eight. Triple seven eight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that that's basically changed the whole, you know, you get additional, I think, 50 or 100 points when you get triple seven, eight thing. And that actually makes all the difference. And I think our score was 550, if I remember. And yes, close to 550. I think 700 is the maximum point that time. And our score was like 550-ish, something like that. I don't like... 550? It, it it's it's like more 10 or 20 points more than the next cutover like every fortnight there was a cutover happening but we, we remember that our score was like 10 points more than that month cutover this this was in the year of 2015 or 16 that was 2017 actually 2017 wow because because the the current cutoff is is hovering around 545 50 right now uh, and it is uh, quite quite a competitive market uh, for people uh, who do not have master's degree, who do not have high English, and not in the right uh, occupation to to be there, of course, and not having studied in Canada. But nonetheless, so how long how long did it take for the complete express entry process to complete? Like one year? There was a twist in it, um, and that twist you already know, and uh, we come to you, we knock on your door to help us. Okay, so big to begin, mm -hmm. as soon as we receive the um, uh, invitation to uh, apply, mm -hmm. uh, we submit the application uh, within four weeks. You, I think they give you like four to six weeks to submit your application. Yeah. Within that time frame, we submit all the application fees, everything. And within three weeks, we got the invitation to uh, submit our passport like within three weeks mm -hmm. after submitting the application uh, our visa was uh, we, we after three weeks we, we submit our visa to uh, sorry the passport to our VFS within two weeks we get our uh, we get our uh, visa and that uh, COPR but in, during that same time my we came to know that my wife is expecting and she was not expecting one but two yeah. And so as soon as you get the COPR, there's a one year time that you have to land in Canada. Otherwise, that COPR, COPR basically it's it's the one year from the time you give your health test. So uh, less less or more, we give our health uh, like a month or two before. Let's say but as soon as we get the COPR, we have like 10 months. Yeah. 
to land in Canada. But unfortunately, when when we when she's when she's and she said, no, it's a high risk pregnancy. We cannot go. We cannot take a risk. And uh, the airlines need some certificate from the doctor that she's fit to fly. And but my our, our doctor refused to um, give that. And that at that moment, we were all uh, our, our hopes were demolished because uh, that was the one time opportunity. But we choose family. We choose our kids that no, the kids health is important. We don't want to risk that. We stay in, stays in India, we let our COPR get expired. And it was a good call because our kids were preemies. They they born like uh, in seven months. And you know, when you land in Canada, especially in Ontario, you don't get the health services. You only have to wait for three months. So blessing in disguise, uh, we get all the treatment uh, for our preemies back, back home and then once they come back to home, we started the whole application procedure and then we're, we reach out to you and you help us in getting the COPR again. Yeah, now let's let's go back to the 2017 when you got the invitation for express entry that time uh, I have on the. Can you see on the screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Yes. Yeah, this is express entry in 2017. The cutoff CRS score at that time uh, it is around it never it, it never went beyond 500 uh, which which month you got the invitation maybe in uh, june july or summer winter when do you remember uh, i think it was in summers beginning of summers all right so if you look at uh, starting from march of 2017 yeah march okay yeah 441 uh, it never was. This is PNP, the general uh, program, which is uh, general FST, FSW, is 450 or something. So it never went. I was a little taken aback when you said it was five, uh, but it never. Yeah, so it, sh it, it, it may be uh, 450. As yeah. I said, it's I, I cannot recall. It, it was in the 50s, like last. So it, it it's around 450. Yeah, yeah. So the, you know, see in uh, June 28, it was 449. And uh, that's, uh, but anyway, not the rest, no problem. Uh, that's okay. You are here, you got successful, that's what it matters. Who cares about the points that time? Uh, now, uh, you, were you prepared about the job search? I mean, how, how did you prepare yourself to, how did you choose where to live in Canada? Um, so I know that Ontario is where we have to go. We were decided from day one because two reasons. Number one, the family support. My wife's elder sister was already in Ontario in in in, in Brampton. And uh, number two, being in IT, we know that the job opportunities looking into all those Indeed and all those portal, we know there are more job opportunities in Ontario. Um, so that was our uh, day one uh, goal and very clear Thought that we will be landing in Ontario. And uh, sorry, what's your next question? Uh, how did you settle yourself uh, in uh, in in that in that place uh, in Ontario and Canada, where you 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 already had a family support? But yeah, how how did you uh, see yourself finding a job quickly and finding the right job matching your skills from India and experience? So we tried from India. Uh, everybody knows that my. My, my kids were six months old, so we know that my wife is not going to work there because we don't afford any maid or a babysitter for kids while uh, they go to my wife go to a um, job. Uh, uh, there are day daycare programs, but we still uh, decided not to uh, go with the daycare programs. So every, uh, you know, the all the whole uh, burden was on me and my job skills. I started looking from uh, back home. I, I take I take a Canadian number in case the recruiter wants me to talk if so i start posting my my resumes uh with my canadian number that i have it's it's like a virtual number you can take um start posting that uh, resume with that virtual number um and uh, i waited for a month or two before landing uh no response uh it was around august and july when i start applying uh from India and no response. Uh, the good thing happened with me is that when I was working back home, I told my employer that uh, is that okay? I have to, you know, go to Canada 
And if I can work from there, uh, my employer were, okay, this one of the five IT companies I was top five IT companies I was working for. I, I convinced them that, see, uh, my customer based in North America, the customer was based in Texas. I said, uh, I want to go to Canada for a month. I have some, uh, some wedding or some some family function in, 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 in home. And if that is that okay, if I can go there and work and they agree to it, they said, okay, you can work from uh, Canada. And since you are in the same time zone, that's okay with us. So that was a kind of the strong, um, you know, in my head that I still have something, yeah. you know, I have a backup. I, I, I said to myself, okay, I still have a job. Okay. I'm not losing anything back home. I am not cutting any, any string from um, uh, uh, back home. I'm still I'm having a job. I continue with my job. Though my con- the, the job that I, I was having in India, it is enough to pay my basement rent. My basement rent at that time was around uh, uh, 2008, 18. Uh, it was around uh, $1,400, including utilities. So that was enough to pay my basement rent. That's the main block in my head that I, okay, I have at least my salary coming from India to get the basement rent and then just we can take care of it from our savings. Mm. So I continued to work and then within three weeks, I got an opportunity. Um, I got an opportunity before, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, two weeks before, uh, but I was not ready for that interview. They asked few few human resource questions. I was like thinking, okay, it's an it's a job interview, and just like in India, like you go to an interview, they ask you technical questions, and then the HR round comes in, you clear it, that's it. But here, it's totally different. It's more on HR side, less on technical. Like how you see uh, five years from now, the best day at work. I, I was not prepared for all those questions, and I just screw that interview and I lost that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, then I, another opportunity comes in, it's a downtown and, um, this opportunity was like not a full-time opportunity, but was a contractual role. Mm. And, uh, I was kind of no towards it, but then I spoke with a couple of people again, when, when you come to Canada, uh, this, uh, contractual culture and job is very common, uh, versus full-time, uh, more people, they prefer contract, uh, contractual work mm. uh, because you will save more taxes than being in a full-time job because you have to take care of everything, your taxes, your corporation tax, your personal tax, your HST and everything. So uh, I spoke to a couple of my mentors here and then they say, okay, no, it's, it's better if you get an opportunity, go with a contractual role. It's about a six months opportunity to start with. And then I, started in that company and I'm still with that company. It's been five years and I'm still with that company. Uh, you are you are an independent contractor with that company? Yes. Okay. Uh, you you mentioned a few things about the, the interviewing culture and the interviewing structure of uh, people uh, who come, you know, they, they find it's a new, new pattern or new system uh, of being uh, assessed for the job. Uh, what kind of questions uh, did you uh, did you not like at the human resources question that you mentioned that you were not prepared with the questions besides the technical questions that nobody asked? What were those grilling uh, uh, human resources questions that they were interested to find answers from? Uh, those are very typical questions. If someone looking for, I would suggest them to look for um, AWS job interview questions on YouTube. Um, they were like, uh, tell me the best day at your work. Uh, a difficult question. Tell 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 us a difficult question, a difficult uh, problem in your work, and how you handle it. Tell me a conflict with your colleague, with your manager, and how you handle it. Uh, tell me one challenging task in your workforce that you handle it. Um, and if someone is more interested to how answer those questions, look for the STAR method that I follow later on. And uh, in in YouTube. Uh, go for look for the AWS uh, Amazon Web Service interviews. They have like a bunch of uh, questions and answers. And mostly if, 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 if anyone knows about AWS, it's one of the number one cloud service provider. And they have like five different rounds of interviews, not only technical, they look for a person who is best fit in their company in terms of, especially in terms of 
interpersonal skill, human resource skill, and then they look for someone who is more technically sound. So they can look for that. Uh, they can search for that uh, YouTube uh, channels. They will get a lot of things. As a as a side comment to what you just said, I remember in my case when I was interviewed for the first time in Canada for my basic job in the law office uh, first time that was in 2007. And I remember, uh, you know, when you talk about this HR round questions in Canada and America, they ask you for these, for example, questions of how do you handle conflict? What if you have a disagreement with your with your team member? How will you do? And the funny thing is that uh, uh, I told the <laughs> I told the HR recruiter I don't have any conflict. Why would I have any conflict? And said, "What? What are you talking about? Come on, you will have any conflict." No, I never had my conflict. Come on, and you know the 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 questions did not progress beyond that. And uh, and I told them, "Look, why why I'm I I, I don't fight. I'm, why would I have a conflict? I don't have any disagreement. I have no disagreement with anybody in my life." And they said, no, 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 no. And I, I didn't get the job though, but, but you know, they expect a certain response with these questions and they want you to answer in a way, uh, you know, that, that shows them that you can manage the conflict and, you know, just a, just a different mindset. But anyway, uh, I, can, I can never, personally, I can never take a job interview according to what the HR people are expecting. And some people are good at the job interview, I'm not. I'm the kind of person, hey, show me the work. Let me do the work and show me, show, show, let me show you the work. You know, exactly. Uh, but uh, anyway, so you got this job and uh, how how was the work culture in that company different from the work culture in India where you were working with the big six uh, consulting companies? Very, very interesting, very interesting. So uh, if, if, if anybody knows about uh, Canadian work culture, it's pretty, pretty relaxed. Um, the day one I entered, I had to do some migration uh, within a year or within, uh, yeah, within a year and a half to complete some uh, project work that uh, they were looking for someone. Um, and from day one, I just get my IDs ready. Like first week, I get my IDs ready, get my access on to the application. And then by date, by week three and week four, I was just like full on, full on. I was like having meetings. I was setting meeting people, asking people to join the meetings, different teams, different uh, people, colleagues, managers. And then uh, I was like, I have, I, I was like back home. If, if a work is given to me, I have to finish it as soon as possible. You know, I have to deliver it because I was working in that customer culture environment because one of that, the, uh, the IT companies have their customer and then they put you in that project and you have to deliver the project, uh, you know, with the best, possible time in, 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 in best quality, that kind of work. But here I was working for a Canadian company, a local company, and they're not expecting that to you to be very fast. They are, they are very relaxed. So one day uh, my, my manager called me up and say, Vishwas, you need to hold on. You have to slow down. Don't be in rush, take it easy. And I was like, really? Back home it's like, here it's like, be relaxed. You don't have to do it like today. Take it easy. So that's the that's the main thing I like about working in America. Uh, sorry, in, in Canada, uh, that people believe that they have given a job to human, and and those are really human. They that human has a family, and that family and they they have to be you know and they have to work. They can only work between nine to five, and they are not machines and is, they value you. Yeah, whereas in India, people don't treat you as human being. They want, they are focused on the job done. That's it. Uh, however you do it, how fast you do it is upon you. India is pretty, pretty stressful. Like 3 a.m. in the morning, I'm sleeping. And I, I just got my call from a manager and uh, and, and they are like, oh, God, which was there is some issue happened. Can you jump in? And I said, like, man, I'm, it, it's not my day. Uh, uh, ask someone else. Oh, that person is not picking up the phone. Please, can can you come and do that? Do this, and then um, it's there is n there is no overtime. I'm getting like I'm I'm working eight hours in a day, and if I have to stretch for nine to ten hours, there is no overtime. I'm getting there's no new time. I'm getting there's no paid time. I'm getting in India. But here, the 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 work culture, the labor laws are strict. Even if you exceed an hour, you will get a new time in some companies, or in some companies they will pay you. So they they are not forcing they cannot force you to work beyond your eight hours in a day. 
Many many people in India they report that there there's a lot of family or like office politics in uh, in Indian offices, India based offices. Do you did you find any office politics here in Canada? Uh, yes and no. There are def- definitely uh, being a person of color. There are definitely c- preferences, uh, but um, there are. Yes, I would say yes. There is a uh, political structure in the Canadian companies as well, um, and depends who you are, how you approach that process. Like just a few minutes back, we were talking about conflict at work, right? Yeah. How you handle that situation. So in the end of the day, you have to uh, ask yourself, like, are you going to be the owner or the CEO or the manager of this company, or you want to be like keep your job uh, intact. So those kinds of questions you have to ask. And then I've, it's again, it's approach. Like for yeah. me, if that thing happens, okay, you want, to, you want to go and stand in the queue first and become win the gold medal, go ahead. But let me, you know, make my life easy. And I'm, I'm, I'm here to work from nine to five and that's it. I'm not bother about what you're going to do after work. You're going to go for a beer. You're going to go for smoke or you want to go for somewhere else. I know I'm, I have my I have my uh, life. I have my hobbies after five that I will go and take care of. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Uh, a lot, lot of people who are uh, STEM engineers, like IT engineers in India, they are skilled in certain things and, uh, you know, they know certain things. I'm uh, you can see my screen. I'm on mm-hmm. Uh, what is the biggest uh, skill that that Canada in IT skill needs? What can I type right now to see on Indeed that this is the skill that most people are, you know, most companies are trying to find talent on? What 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 skill? Uh, data Type. warehouse, AI. Yeah, data. Anything related to data that is originating. Uh, data 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 warehousing, data engineer, data analyst. All of these skills are very in in, in very uh, high demand. Data. Okay, we we got this manager data. Analytics, reporting, yep. blah, blah blah, data, Accenture, you know this company, master data management, concern, data warehouse, quite quite a number of quite a number of data. Yep. Uh, what what other skills are are in high demand uh, now and in coming years in Canada, specific to Canada, that uh, IT engineers in uh, India can benefit and can search directly the jobs from sitting in India. Um, I'm from the infrastructure side, so I can speak for that. Uh, in my field, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in data, uh, I work in uh, data centers. So in, in my field, there is a lot of scope for people looking for cloud, especially the Azure, Azure and the AWS cloud. Okay. Uh, that's what's in demand. And uh, then uh, like the VMware, the storage, those kinds of skills. Yeah. Uh, the, the the common perception is that uh, um, Canada lags behind the U.S. in uh, job availability and the salaries. Is that correct, or uh, you know, do you think realistic, or it doesn't matter because per capita we have, uh, you know, they have more engineers. The demand and supply in in U.S. is pretty much uh, you know what is matching and. Uh, each other, but we have less number of engineers here, even though we have less number of job, uh, you know, positions available. Um, yes and no. I have seen this trend changing. Uh, yes, I, 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 I strongly believe that in terms of uh, the pay structure and the uh, in, in, and and the vacancies, they 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 need to be improved. Uh, for an engineer working, let's say, a data analyst, maybe. Uh, who is working in Canada, maybe getting a starting pay of 90,000 per year versus in, in US, he must be getting around 130, 120 USD per year. So definitely, definitely the pay structure in Canada is less. And uh, in terms of opportunities, I don't disagree. I don't disagree, yes. Uh, but like in last two, three years, I've seen the trend changing. There are a lot of US companies were actually creating job market in Canada uh, because of the H1 restrictions happening. Uh, I've seen like two or three of my colleagues, my office mates and friends, they moved from US to Canada 
uh, because they were not getting H1 renew, but they are getting the uh, the, the 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 work permit uh, in Canada very easily. So, but yeah. in terms of pay structure, yes, that is true. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, even if even if in India, where uh, somebody who has a BTEC uh, and uh, maybe my, uh, MTech, and they have three years, four years of experience, and they are around 29, 30 or so, still they will be struggling to have points enough to match the current intake in the express entry. Uh, they, they definitely need a fast track system or maybe uh, something, uh, maybe like a job offer or something to boost them up all the way uh, you know, through, the, through the express entry. Have you seen any successes uh, so far where companies are offering LMIA to bring software engineers from India? No, I haven't seen. I haven't seen. Uh, there is there is a good pool of people locally in Canada. My understanding about getting LMIA sponsorship is when uh, they don't find uh, any matching skills at in in, in Canada. Um, I can think of AI. Maybe that's one of the key areas, which is. Uh, Taking, uh, which is taking off in next few years, I can imagine like finding a very good niche uh, in, in 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 an engineer in AI skills. That could be the one. But so far, I haven't seen any company providing LMIA. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, I mean, it's if it's if it's a company here like Cognizant or Infosys or TCS, uh, where that person is already working back in India. I've seen the sponsorship happening. Again, that's a work permit thing, but not the LMIA. Yeah, those those companies whose uh, name you took just now, I think they are more interested to bring people on intra-company transfer visa. Uh, yeah, maybe one year, two year, three years, so and yeah. then we can renew. But uh, you know that that's it. I mean, it's an it's an uh, LMIA exempt work permit based on intra-company transfer. But, yeah. Uh, do you see on the screen uh, the global talent talent stream? Do you see somewhere? I can see it. Yes. Do you know what that is? Honestly, no. I can just guess, but not exactly what ex it is. As as it says, this is for talented individuals, and there are some occupations they have specified that if uh, if the companies want to hire talented people, like global talent, of course, uh, they can do a fast track LMIA, and uh, you know, pretty much there's a Category A, Category B. If uh, you know, there are some uh, referral partners like like uh, Technology uh, Chamber of Commerce and Incubators. And uh, let me just show you the global talent uh, uh, list, the occupation, what occupations are eligible. They all stem. You see that on the screen? Computer. I can see it. Yeah. Blah, blah, a lot of engineers, data scientists. This is where you are. Two, mm -hmm. two, uh, you know. Blah. And it tells you uh, pretty much uh, these are the people who are eligible. And I always tell them, and it tells you the minimum uh, prevailing wage rate. You know, typically, uh, let's see, eighty-five thousand dollars, and you know, per year and higher or whatever. So that is in that is the range of uh, the salary that you're looking for. Of course, each salary is different for each NOC, but global talent stream is uh, specifically targeted for STEM occupations. And uh, if any company uh, who wants a talent from overseas, outside Canada, whether they are in India or or, uh, or America, they can they can tap this program, Global Talent Stream program. The and I've seen the the turnaround time in getting the LMIA is uh, two to four weeks. Uh, give it, give or take two weeks at the minimum, two weeks, and then as soon as it's done, then it's it has a fast turnaround time on issuing the issuing the work permit. So I've seen people coming here in four to five weeks after the process starts and and the ends, they can come here on a on a uh, work permit specific to the employer, and uh, and it's a good a good way to start the you know, career in Canada. It's, it's like experience and then we'll move on to express entry. So this is a stream that I wanted to tell people that, you know, focus on this stream. If you don't know, if you don't know this link, go and type global talent stream on the, on the Google uh, okay. and, and then you can read, read all about this. Everything is right here. Everything is right here. And, and that's, that's so this is a, this is a good program. And there's a, 
it, it, there's a dedicated email to it. There's employer, you know, employers can contact the dedicated customer service. Uh, so it's a very fast track process. It's mm -hmm. it's, very, it's very faster than the regular LMIA, regular, you know, anybody who wants to go to uh, the regular LMIA, they should they should shun that because many employers uh, don't know. And, you know, even immigration law, a lot of immigration lawyers don't know or they haven't used this. So they mm -hmm. haven't had much experience on it. So this is meant for people, anybody who wants to. But anyway, that's the side thing. So uh, you are you are now uh, you are now uh, you chose to become a citizen eventually, um, and uh, now you're happy. I mean, you, you do do you wish to return to India to help your country to you know do like a startup or something else, or you Canada is your home? That's it. No more India working or nothing going there. Maybe retirement, I would say right now, but uh, for time being, I'm happy in here, happy in Canada, and. Uh, Plus, I have a U.S. job market open for me. Being not everyone knows, but uh, if you are a Canadian citizen, you no longer need H-1B to go and work there. So, if in case uh, in future, if I don't have a job in Canada, I can always look in the U.S. and move there. That's something open for me. That's a that's a big brain drain from India to Canada and North America. Uh, I agree. I agree. And. Uh, uh, I hope the things will change in future. I have seen that uh, my junior is getting good package in India now. Um, like I remember starting my first job. I go, I was my first salary was twenty thousand rupees. Mm -hmm. Now, within two or three years, kids are getting like two three lakhs per month. I hope uh, people stays in India and uh, the the growth that was lack when I moved. I hope that continues. Uh, but as I said, that their country has their own challenge, and it's some everyone has their personal in, interest. Um, I, I, my foremost, as I said, that I already working night because my work culture is that I have to be available 24 by seven, and uh, my work culture was uh, actually uh, screwing my personal life. I have to, even after marriage and 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 and, and having kids, I will be working nine, not nine to five, I was just working like evening shifts or the night shift because to, my, my customer is in North America. So not, it's it's not everyone's decision, but my personal decision was being in this stream. I I feel like I'm, it's better to move to North America, close to North America and work in their time zone than to support them from India and off ours. And, and we are not regretting it because at least we are getting a fresh air and uh, you know, but I have uh, I have police. I have I have I have fire services available within ten minutes. Um, at least I have seen like people value uh, human life. I don't say in India it doesn't happen. It, things are changing, uh, but still the, the the kind of infrastructure they have, uh, especially like at, at eight o'clock, I out go outside. I feel like it's 12 o'clock midnight in India. Like there are nobody at on the roads. Uh, there's less public around, there's less population, less problem. India has everything. I don't, I'm not denying it, but it's it's like the population, like which is like killing it, killing it. Yeah. Now you you are from the New Delhi NCR region. You live in, in, in and this yeah. is the capital that has the infrastructure, whatever India has. Uh, still, it was deficient as compared to what you see in Canada. Agree, totally agree. I mean, um, uh, especially uh, if you talk about the health services. Uh, again, um, I won't say it's not; it's it's the worst. Canada has their own pop problems. Uh, the good thing in India is that you don't have that uh, ambulance service at your door within ten minutes, fifteen minutes, right? But in emergency, people go straight to bed. If if you can afford private healthcare system in India, you go straight to bed. You don't have to wait. In Canada, you have to wait for four hours, five hours in emergency, unless you are throwing like a bucket full of blood. You're just staying for four hours in emergency and waiting for to see, see the doctor. Talking about talking about Canadian healthcare uh, system will take another full episode because healthcare is one of the leading problems that many Canadian citizens complain about, and 
uh, not only immigrants, but the Canadians who were born here, they are not satisfied with the Canadian healthcare overall. Some, in some cases, yes, but overall they're not uh, happy. And they always compare with countries like Scandinavia, like France and Sweden and Norway and you know, those countries. Those countries have better outcomes than, than Canada for sure. A uh, lo lot of people, a lot of fresh immigrants who have recently come here, they have complained that Canada is a very expensive country and there's no savings. What do you? What is your experience? I cannot deny them. The if you look at the overall tax rate, yes, we are the number, I think, top five or top three overall in the world. Um, if you are in a good bracket, you are paying around forty-eight percent taxes. Mm. Um, Speaking of that with the fellow Canadians, they don't complain it because they say that we are getting services for free. We're getting the healthcare system, though there is there are delays, but at least we are getting the uh, major health services free of cost. Um, so, but yes, I cannot deny them. There, there are situation that has. Uh, last couple of years due to uh, inflation and uh, uh, less number of jobs in the market that have changed and then um, on a brighter side i would suggest i would commend that um, think don't think in think think in a box don't think like in india you have one job and then you are doing that's it in canada it gives you an opportunity to do the lots of side hustles right i'll tell you one incident I book a Uber from from a suburban area to a downtown, Toronto downtown. A guy came in, a very nicely groomed guy, wearing a tie and a pant and a blazer hanging. And I was like checking my phone and comparing the number that I have in the Uber. And I was like, am I paying like more for this uber like did i book an uber x or their elite service the guy the chauffeur is in thai and then wow i yeah. just i just confirmed no it is my uber and then i went in get into conversation because i'm curious to ask this guy what's what's so special are you mad or something and he said no i'm just commuting to my work i said how he said i'm a manager in td bank in downtown so i live in brampton i i commute every day and in Uber, they give you like two options in a day to put your manmana route. You know, you can put your 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 routes as per your wish two times in a day. Yeah. So once I go when I go from Brampton to downtown, I put, and then from downtown to Brampton, I put, and this way I'm just getting my uh, my, my my gas free. So, so this is one example, and the people do a lot of things. Yeah. So uh, you know. We, we, you, we have, I have a, you have an image of a, it's called a taxi driver. Uh, in, I, I know I sometimes travel to Delhi and you, you book uh, Ola or Uber or one of those blue. And, uh, you know, somebody who comes with a car, he, he's not dressed. He's, he's not, he's, he's never wearing a chai and blazer and those things. And, you know, you either you're in the taxi business because that's the job. And here, as contrast, you saw this guy who's who's nicely dressed. He himself is a working as a man, something. So, giving full respect to dignity of labor, our manager is also a taxi driver part time, and trying to club, uh, you know, yes. his commute time with extra income and, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's commit. You know, uh, one of the one of the great uh, advantages of. Uh, this is not only in Canada, America, and other countries. The Western liberal, uh, you know, democracies here is that uh, no job is small or or, or or high job. You know, like any any job is a job. A job is a job, whether it's cleaning, or uh, manager, or taxi, or food delivery, something. Uh, you know, there's no disrespect to the nature of the job itself, which is very different in India. You know, you 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 don't. In India, you don't talk to a Safai Karmachari, you know, something with the same respect as you would talk to somebody here. And, you know, it's, it's, this is a big contrast that people find in the culture and the living, uh, you know, just uh, dealing with human beings. A you know. uh, lot, uh, 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 lot of instances, for example, in India, I mean, I, I don't, want, don't want to criticize though, but this is a fact that there's so much of racial discrimination in India where 
people do not, there's like a, somebody is lower, somebody is higher, like a caste system or somebody from a different region. Uh, people in North, they don't like to mingle around with people from, you know, from, you know, from maybe a different culture, different language, something. It's very difficult to integrate. Maybe they don't, uh, you know, they, there's a there's an invisible caste system in your mind. But but in Canada, everything goes. Uh, you know, there's there's pretty much there may be a discrimination here, but uh, you know, it's like uh, le legally you you cannot. I mean, every, everybody is uh, treated at the same part. I think but, in the, in Canada, you have to prove that you are smart. That's the key. Yeah. You know, street street smart. Job smart, work smart, and and people. It's not like definitely there is there is a preferences, um, but here if you if you know your work and you are the best, people will love to be in your company. People will love to talk. People will want to wanted to work with you. It's yeah. you have to just and being being uh, from a different company. Of course, you have to. You cannot give any room for them to comment or find an excuse in you. Where, where the, the place where you are, do you do you see or do you hear about a lot of Indian students uh, in uh, in where you are? Do you see Indian students like on a study visa? Yeah, so the place where I live, it's close to Durham Tech. Um, and this is this is a very big uh, university, like four or five uh, kilometers away from my home, and uh, uh, it's come under Ontario Technology, Ontario Tech, they call it. And uh, in the last two three years, yes, I've start started seeing a lot of uh, Indian influx because this area is predominantly uh, the European settlers, mostly the locals where I live in. Now I'm seeing like a lot of Indians started coming in and now I'm seeing a lot of Indian students, especially they have started coming in. Uh, this area doesn't have a basement culture so far, but now I'm seeing people started renting out their basement because there are students demand. So things are changing. Yeah, I'm sorry. What university did you say is close to where you are? Ontario Tech University? Yeah, Ontario Tech. It's 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 basically Durham, Durham Tech and it's come under the Ontario uh, yeah. Technical University. Have you visited uh, GTA like uh, Brampton area, Brampton Missouri area too often or never? Seldom. So in my journey, we started in Brampton for a couple of weeks. Uh, then when I got my first job, uh, we decided to move to Mississauga. And Mississauga is we we had this uh, downtown Mississauga uh, square one area that where we moved, and it's all the high rise area. So we moved in a condo, a two bedroom condo, and we lived there for three three years uh, before we moved and we purchased our first property uh, here. Yeah. In, in the Brampton and Missaga area, did you notice a lot of Indian uh, ghetto uh, culture population where a lot of uh, everybody, every street is an Indian, uh, Indian people uh, on the streets? Of Miss Brampton, yes, I would say. Brampton has uh, a lot of that kind of ghetto. Um, Mississauga is more uh, Middle Eastern um, Indian, but yeah, Brampton, yes, definitely, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was in 2017 or 2018? 2018 till uh, 20, 21, mm -hmm. 2019 till 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at present, they are, they are, uh, the number of students is overwhelming the immigration system. And uh, majority of students are from India, uh, and it's every everything is in the news. Uh, and uh, Canada cannot absorb all these uh, temporary residents, including students and uh, subsequent work permit holders on PG work permit. So we don't have enough spaces for them to give them immigration. Uh, compared to somebody like you who came directly from India, what do you think of this uh, problem where? Uh, uh, these these temporary residents who are already in Canada right now, who are languishing in the system to get the PR. What do you think of this problem, and how can this be solved? Uh, number one, the the housing industry needs to speed up. Uh, we need more number of dwellings. 
uh, in coming years. Uh, I have seen in last past five years, the, earlier the things were horizontal, now it's vertical. The, the, the trend has changing. Even in the suburban areas, in the Brampton areas, it's like used to be horizontal. Like, uh, now I'm seeing like a lot of condos development started coming in. Uh, number one, they need to build housing, keeping in mind the housing needs to be affordable. That even the person, like a day one, you cannot buy even a single condo because you need to build a credit score. You have some bank balance. The people need, bank need a trust in you and everything. Everybody knows. So you have to end up in either in a basement or, or in, a, in, in, a, in a small condo unit. Um, even for that, there needs to be an affordability, right? Um, you're earning $4,000 a month and your condo is like $2,000, $2,500 a month. You cannot afford it. Uh, especially a single person cannot afford in this country unless you and your partner both are working. So in, in, in my case, whatever I'm earning right now, it's, it's going in mortgage. And my house is running on my wife's income. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know it is quite expensive uh, to to survive, and um, I I pity these international students who have to take uh, exorbitant uh, and heavy burden loans from India to fund their education. Come here, bring bring about forty to fifty thousand dollars of the GIC and first year tuition fees, and then manage to pay subsequent year fees, uh, and then survive in basements in Brampton where in one house I have seen 20 people, 20 students living in one house. In one room, about five people, uh, you know, uh, sleeping in the, in, in, in the ground and uh, on, on the on the end uh, and on the revolving beds. Somebody sleeps in the night, night and the, in the day. That's, that's not what we uh, that's not. I'm sure they have dreamt home them back home when they moved to Canada. Yeah, yeah. So it is it is a big problem going forward and I don't know how this will be resolved. Uh, and for the next four or five years, I think the Canadian immigration system is under stress uh, due to the the current government's uh, liberal policies, and we don't know what what's, uh, what's my what's. my suggestion is. I don't know. I may be wrong, but uh, the the opportunities given given to students they they need they, they, they need to be based on the matriculations. It's not if I have if I have hundred thousand in my pocket. And if I approach a Canadian university, they say, OK, you, can you able to fee the fee? Can you show your bank balance? OK, I can do that. Come. Forget about your numbers. If you if you get 60 percent in year 12 or 50 percent in year 12, like there has to be some cut over, right? Like give the opportunity to the best ones and based on matriculation. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have something. Maybe they have some exams or like, for example, IELTS. for the PR holder, it's so difficult to get that triple seven, eight. Why don't you? have something not I would say like make it so strict for the students, but at least. Give some that kind of thing. Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a short capsule of the problem with the international starting with the international student visa problem because for the past about seven to eight years, uh, four years prior to COVID, uh, the number of small colleges in Canada like I don't want to take any names, but uh, uh, Ontario is full, full of um, you can just search the private colleges. They are all licensed and authorized by government to take in international students. Many of these colleges are called diploma mills. That means they are in the business of churning out yeah. diploma certificates. They are running like a business, running like a shop. They are not colleges. There's some colleges are even one or two room or three room. You know, anybody who has a big house, they can convert into a college. Many people did that. Many investors from India invested their money in Canada to open a college. The purpose was to bring in uh, a large number of students on, on these study visa in, in uh, places like North India and other places, maybe Gujarat. Uh, everybody was, I'm, I'm talking about seven, eight years ago and, and continuing till now. Everybody is desperate to come to Canada because they had no entry in America, no entry in Australia and other countries. They had low marks, low marks in their high school and whatever they were studying in India. Uh, they had no future uh, stepping stone uh, to Canada is a study visa. So these colleges, junior colleges were in the business of bringing in 
Uh, so there are some, I don't want to take any names, but some universities and uh, some private universities and some colleges were 90% Indian students. There are no white students in the whole, whole college. And uh, many students have reported when they went into the classroom, they did not find any uh, Canadian born person. They were all just like they were studying in Delhi or Bombay. Uh, they all talking Hindi, Gujarati or something, and they were all there. And it was just a way to generate money. Now, because of the three times the price uh, of the tuition, if 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 I as a Canadian citizen went to a, a course which charged me $8,000 and uh, the the foreign student was paying $24,000. And so there was there are there are some universities you can check on Google. There are some universities who, who turned out profits in excess of hundreds of millions of dollars based on this revenue coming from just from India only. So yeah. and this kept on uh, accumulating this this bubble kept on accumulating till it become a pressure on housing and there are no jobs uh, there were some uh, bizarre stories uh, in gt area where a few jobs which were open for walmart or maybe dishwashing jobs yeah. uh, in in uh, in small restaurant where for where for one dishwashing jobs there were about 500 international yeah. students in the line and yeah. they all wanted to do dishwashing jobs whether they were studying computer science or not because there were no jobs. So this bubble was created by the liberal policies, expansionist policies. Of, uh, now, of course, uh, recently it has been announced that they will curtail, but not much. I, I, I don't think it went far enough uh, based on a certain quota allocated to colleges in consultation with the provincial uh, system. So but let's again, uh, if those students getting a job, uh, they've been exploited by their employer. Like the minimum wages is $14, $15, but they're getting like $10. Well, you know, the, the reason is it's a vicious circle because because they are living in big cities like uh, Brampton, uh, the big, uh, you know, those those uh, Brampton, Nisaga, GT area, because they most of them were were uh, given admission in this area because because the agents in India were getting commissions of these colleges. So, for example, the cost of the fees for one year was tuition uh, was $20,000. The typical commission was 15% or maybe even higher. So that's $3,000 commission to an in Indian agent sitting in India per, per student. If, if they sent 100 students per year, I mean, that's 100 is nothing. I know I know some agents in India who send 1,000 students. If you if you multiply 1,000 by, let's say, 2,000, 3,000, that's more than you know $2 million sitting in India. $2 million, you cannot earn $2 million here in one year. Which an Indian agent could could uh, be there. So because of this uh, agency system, and they they sent everybody and anybody got the visa, and the and the visa officers were lax. They were very lean, and they didn't. I I do not know why they didn't check or not. And sometimes I'm I'm puzzled how did this guy got a study visa when I I can clearly see he's not a student visa material. And people people who had nothing to study in India, they all came to study in Canada. I mean, I always ask them, hey. If you're such a meritorious student, why don't you go to study in IIT or University of Delhi or somewhere or whatever? They they would say clearly, we don't want to study in India. We will only study in Canada because that's where we want to get it. So it, it is all a crooked system. And, uh, you know, this this is how the mess we are in. Uh, and as a result, uh, all these uh, students, I mean, in fact, last week, you can do a Google search last week, a large number of students in Prince Edward Island are protesting that uh, they be given uh, extension of the work permit because the PEI uh, changes policy on the nomination system because they no longer are giving nomination to uh, service occupations like you know working in Tim Hortons or you know food and service and those things. They only want people in technical trades, for example, in construction. So uh, a large number of students, I think, I, I don't even have the number. I'm thinking maybe in thousands. Uh, they have no future now because. They, their their work experience is zero in Prince Edward Island, and because the work permit is expiring, they have no other extension of opportunity to work continue, and then the, they will lose the chance to become a PR. You know, people like you are uh, there. You are very fortunate. Can you, um, the reason why I'm telling the story is is because uh, earlier a large swath of uh, uh, people. They thought they can bypass the Canadian immigration system by coming on a study visa or other work permit, and then eventually, you know, transition to PR. As compared to somebody like you who came to Canada on a direct PR based on your merit and occupation experience and English those skills, 
and and then eventually you know uh, your journey from PR to citizenship is quite quite swift, and now you are you are done. Whereas these hundreds and thousands, I would say the 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 number is more than two hundred fifty thousand people at the least. More than two hundred fifty thousand people are in limbo. Uh, they came from different countries. They came from India, Pakistan, and China, and other countries, and now they have no future. No, totally agree. Totally agree, and it's all uh, uh, what do you call it? Bhir <laughs> Chal. And by the way, uh, peer pressure. Gonna, yeah, and next year, next year you will have a chance to vote and show your vote for whichever government you like, whichever whichever government is uh, you know giving taking the right policy. But anyway, uh, what is the one last uh, advice that if if you may want to offer to other IT engineers who are sitting in India and Hyderabad, Pune, and Bangalore right now, or, or Gurgaon right now. What can they do right now to to facilitate the the process in getting to Canada through work permit express entry? Anything? Uh, my suggestion is to begin uh, backwards. Start thinking backwards. What if if you get an opportunity, and looking at the current environment of inflation and and, and the challenge and the and the, and the stress. Uh, if you get an opportunity, don't cut your strings with your present employer. Ask your employer, do I have, if you have a sabbatical in your company, take the sabbatical, take a yeah. six months break from your work or take a long vacation from your work. Don't give your resignation. Just take one or two months break. Say you are going on, on, um, on a Euro trip or, or say something, make any excuse, just take one or two months break. Come to yeah. Canada, land to Canada, see things. Yeah. If you are fit or not, because if uh, if Sharmaji's beta can go and do that, if uh, Varmaji's beta can do that, it's not. You're not one of them, maybe, right? Maybe yeah. they are doing some some other work and they are showcasing. They are very good and all that. No. Come experience Canada. Canada is a beautiful country, guys. It's the most naturistic country. Um, come here, keep your strengths intact. Give yourself two or three months. If you find a job, if you find your the environment, the work culture, everything is as per your expectation, stay or go back, join your company. That's that's a good that's a good idea. I've I've uh, emphasized this uh, many times in the in the history uh, that you know somebody who who especially somebody who's at the IT skill level at the managerial level or the consultant level they are likely to be making maybe two lakh three lakh rupees per month in that range maybe maybe even more uh, and they if they have a good uh, employment history in India it's very likely I'm not saying it's always guaranteed it's very likely that they will get a visitor visa to Canada to come and visit here. It's, you know, just, uh, you know, like a tourist visa. You come there and visit some countries. You can visit America or Canada. Come here for a few weeks, uh, sample the country, see, uh, especially don't come in winter if you, I mean, maybe come in winter if you want to see the real country. Um, and, uh, you know, try to uh, try to understand, try to dip your toes in to see, you know, what what is happening in this country. And maybe once you are here, uh, it is not illegal to apply for jobs and take a job interviews while on tourist visa. All you have to do is, hey, if you have a job, that's wonderful. But I'll go back to Bangalore and then I'll apply for a job or the work visa through your LMIE. Maybe after one or two months or six months, that's 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 fine. But it's always a good idea to come here just to just to tune in to your realistic, uh, you know, expectation of what how much money you need, where do you want to live. Uh, what are the schools best for your, uh, you know, for your children? And can you afford something? Can you afford a house or something? And those things, I think it's always a good idea. You know, whether you want to live in a big city or a small city, or a, maybe you want to start your own business if you like somebody, or maybe you want to live close to your relatives and friends. Those are the decisions that require, uh, uh, you know, one visit. I always tell people that if I'm from New Delhi and if I want to move to Bangalore. I mean, can I pack everything and move to Bangalore and then think whether Bangalore is good for me or not? Or should I go to Bangalore at least for one week and see what yeah. Bangalore is? Right? Come on. I mean, this is a different country we are talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's a good idea to, to check out the reality and do everything. Hey, but anyway, 
Um, I appreciate your time, Vishwas, and uh, I know today is a national holiday, is a family day today, and uh, but you took time to talk uh, to me about your experiences and share your feedback for a lot of people who would benefit by this and people who will watch and who are watching now. And uh, maybe they'll get some tip or two, and then I wish them good, good, uh, uh, good luck in uh, searching for a job and uh, coming to Canada. Sure, sir. It's my pleasure, and I hope this uh, information is uh, helpful to those, those people who are struggling and who are aiming or planning to come here. And uh, thank you for giving me uh, this this uh, opportunity to speak my heart out to you. And uh, yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care.